Hey guys, it's John. This is a Rad 2 tutorial, Roguelike Adventures in Dungeons 2. This is just a tutorial talking about five items that you need to have that would really increase your quality of life in Rad 2. Okay, so the first item we're going to look at is the Lucky Horseshoe. This is a charm. It goes in your charm, ring, or necklace slot. Um, you can find these in dungeons inside of treasure chests. In case you don't get lucky uh, finding one, you can also create one. You can craft one. The reason you want to use this is because it negates all fall damage, which is super helpful in Minecraft because you're always falling off stuff. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. This is such a simple trinket you can have that just totally eliminates fall damage. Um, if you don't get lucky getting it from a chest, you can also craft one, like I said, with the resplendent token. You take four of the spectral silt. You get spectral silt from basically disenchanting different items. Like if you get some of these uh, trinkets from treasure chests, some of these you'll end up getting like multiples a lot of times. Like in particular, in my run through, I got tons of gauntlets of dexterity, a bunch of magic mirrors, a bunch of balloons. So you could just disenchant these with these disintegration tablets. Although if you're going to go this method, you do need access to the nether. We'll have to get four blaze powder and then four nether quartz for each of these disintegration tablets. If you don't know how to get blaze powder, you have to go to, I believe it's called the Ember Bog in the nether. You can find blazes there. They're kind of rare, but you do find them in the Ember Bog and uh, in the nether. You just need to get four blazes once you kill, or you need to get four blaze rods, rather. Once you get the four blaze rods, you can make this thing called a small blaze gate pearl, which takes four blaze rods and then one ender pearl. You'll basically fight like a bunch of blazes, like in waves. You usually get like 30 to 50 of these blaze rods per like if when you finish the entire gate which is super nice so you just need to get four blaze rods and then you pretty much can just do these gates and you'll have unlimited blaze rods and you'll pretty much never have to worry about blaze powder again okay and then the second thing we're going to talk about is the auto feeder and the golden lunch box so basically the reason why you want to be doing this there's this mod called spice of life basically the more food you eat like different diversity of food you'll get these buffs uh from eating you know different types of food the major one you want to get to is seven diversity, food diversity, because you get regen one. You'll just pretty much always have it. You also get in more increased health, you get higher food diversity, armor toughness, strength, and whatnot. So in order to do this, you'll need to make a, a golden lunch box, which you first make a lunch bag, which then you combine it with iron, you make a regular lunch box, and then eventually you get the golden lunch box. The golden lunch box, I believe it holds like 14 items in it. So you can put all your food in here and then you go ahead and make this advanced feeding upgrade for your backpack, which you just combine all these golden foods, make a regular feeding upgrade, then combine it with diamond, gold, redstone, you make the advanced feeding upgrade. You just put it in your backpack, go into the settings over here, you make sure you put it to allow, and then match item, and then put go ahead and put the lunchbox over here, and then it will eat from the lunchbox in your backpack. And then just you can change these other settings if you want to. But it'll basically make it so you're always eating from your backpack and you'll be getting you'll be auto feeding from your backpack and then you'll also be getting the buffs from spice of life so you're killing two birds with one stone it's really nice very easy to do early game not too bad okay so the third thing we're going to talk about i'm cheating because we're going to add four things in this number three thing we're talking about spells so in case you don't know how to do spells this is ars novo this is a mod that's in uh rad 2. in order to get Ars Novo activated, you need to hit level five magic. So in order to do that, you need to mine source gem or uh, which you can pretty much find everywhere underground. You can mine this until you hit level five magic or else you can also look in your quests. A lot of times in your quest log, for example, in meet your fight, you can kill enemies and you'll be able to get a choice reward for XP. So you can also use this to get to level five magic. And then once you get to level five magic, all you need to do is just craft the spell book and then you're good to go uh, on starting your magical journey. So starting out with the level one spell book, uh, the first spell you should probably make is a light spell. This is really easy to make. It's pretty much just projectile plus conjure mage light. This will allow you to put basically down unlimited torches in the world. All it takes is magic uh, mana. And it's really nice because you have basically unlimited torches and then you also are getting magic XP as you can see. So it's a really nice way to just get passive magic XP. Another spell you can make is the night vision spell. All you need to do is add the self glyph plus conjure mage light. And then if once you get level two, um, you can put a bunch of extend times on this. This will give you basically night vision and it's really nice. You pretty much have night vision like at the beginning of the game. That's very easy to do. I'm pretty sure you start with conjure mage light when you make the spell book. But in case you don't, it's real easy to make just magic clay and a lantern. 
And in case you don't know how to start in Ars Novel, you need to make this thing. It's called an agronomic source link. It will give energy as your crops are growing, and then we'll send these energy to the source jar. You can make these with glass. They're very easy to make. It'll fill up with this purple liquid that you see in here. And then you could just put a jar of the purple liquid nearby one of these, which is called a glyph press. You just put the items in the sequence that it says right here. So you put like, for example, put the magic clay first on the glyph press. Then you put the lantern and then it will press the glyph that you want to make. It will take some of the source jar energy from here. So make sure you have enough of the source jelly or whatever inside your jar when you're making glyphs. Pretty easy. So for some of these glyphs, like I was saying, like glyph of extend time and then feather a slow fall. I'll talk about that in a bit. They're tier two glyphs. You need to have a tier two spell book in order to make these. Uh, and in order to get a tier two spell book, you have to have access to the nether. So again, uh, blaze rods and then also quartz. So just make sure if you're going to be using these tier two ones that you have access to the nether. Another quick spell. I wasn't going to talk about this originally. You could make a dispel spell, which I believe this is a tier one. And all it is is self plus dispel. It pretty much just works just like milk. It will take off debuffs from you. You're going to need this dispel for the next spells that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the leap spell. Leap spell is pretty much just self. I add on slow fall. So once you get tier two, you can add on slow fall. You don't have to have that initially. You could just do self plus leap and you have a really nice leap spell. You can also put amplify on it. This is such a really helpful spell. It will allow you to basically just jump around and go wherever the heck you want um, way before you're able to get an Elytra. It's a very important spell. Everybody should be using it. And then, like I said, once you actually get tier two unlocked, you can add on slow fall, which makes it pretty much like a ghetto glider. It makes it so it's you don't it's not quite as good as an Elytra, but it's pretty darn close, way better. Uh, it pretty much gives you uh, some nice gliding until you're able to unlock Elytras. You can also add Amplify spells to them in order to make the Leap spell go further. And then here's my Glide spell in case once you get far enough, once you actually get Elytras. Pretty much the same spell, just Self, Slow Fall, Leap, Amplify. I could You could just use Amplify 1 if you don't have the mana for it, or Amplify 2. Then you just put Glide at the end. But yeah, like I said, the Light spell... And then the leap spell are so important to rad to. I feel like I use these spells all the time. And even if you're not a spellcaster, it's a really great way to level up your magic because all that passive magic XP you're getting just from using leap all the time. And then just from using your light spell or night vision spell. It's really helpful. Okay, so the fourth item we're going to talk about is making an XP backpack, making a backpack that's dedicated to storing XP. There's another item called the Scroll of Ageless Wisdom that you could make. This item can basically give you XP or store XP. Um, it's a really good item. The only problem is it takes a long time for XP to go in and out of the item. So that's why I don't use it anymore. Instead, I've upgraded to this XP backpack. You can just make a, a diamond backpack. If you have netherite, then by all means, make a netherite backpack. You don't have to have one. And then we're going to put on all these upgrades. So the first upgrade we put on is a tank upgrade. Pretty easy to make, just glass and an upgrade base. And then the second one, this is a little tougher. We have to make a pump upgrade. You'll need to have a sticky piston, regular piston to make the pump upgrade. Just diamonds, gold dispenser to make the gold, up, the advanced pump upgrade. And then you'll have to have access to the nether because you'll need two eye of enders and then some XP bottles in order to make the experience pump upgrade. And then lastly, you'll want to make a bunch of stack upgrades. It's okay if you can't afford the diamond ones. You can just make either the iron or the gold ones. Iron and gold is pretty easy to come by in Rad 2, so you should not have a problem getting a bunch of tier 2 stack upgrades. Once you have more access to diamond, you can make the tier 3 one. You can also make another right one, but it's honestly excessive. I'm okay with just using five of the diamond stack upgrades, and I have literally 3,800 XP levels. I'm not barely at 363, so it's more than enough storage. Like I said, you just need the tank upgrade, experience pump upgrade in the backpack, and then you just put a bunch of stack upgrades. And if you want, you could even pour, store stuff in here if you wanted to store items. So when you're getting this XP pump, you can set the level you want, this level limit right here. You can also set the pump experience to player, turn off the pump or pump experience from player. I usually keep it on pump to player. Right here, you can check whether you want to repair items with mending, which is super OP. And then these buttons right here, you can choose to take all your XP, so I have 363, or you could take one level, you could store one level, or store all your experience. One thing to note with the teleporters, when you're using waypoints, you are going to want to store your XP, you don't want to have all your XP on your character, because when you use these teleports, they will take all of your levels. So if you have 363 levels, and you use this one where it takes two levels, it will take, I'll be down to 361, 
and that is super expensive that's like i don't know 50 levels or something like that so make sure anytime before you teleport you store all your xp so you go down to super low levels and then teleport also same thing when you're using your enchants make sure that when you're enchanting you go down to the levels your xp levels that you are enchanting near because if you put it really high again it's going to be taking three levels or whatever and you're going to be burning through a lot of xp and being inefficient the only thing that's exempt to this is the, the anvil when you're repairing or putting on enchant books or whatever on an item it does take the correct amount of xp even if you do have all of your xp on it will only take the correct amount it will not uh, overdraw your XP. So just keep that in mind when you're using the XP backpack. Okay, and then the last one, number five, is the storage system. The storage system is really great. It's similar to other storage mods where it basically will give you a giant bank of inventory that you can just chuck everything in. They also have this storage request table where you can craft through the storage. It basically works by connecting a storage system, the storage network route, and then it connects cables to storage chests, these link cables. You can basically make a million chests. You can have pretty much unlimited storage as long as you got chests. You may have to use a force chunk load command. I'll put it in the comments and in the description. I never had to, but uh, people were saying if you milk your base, I guess, near your spawn point, which my spawn point is like over here, that you won't have to use a force chunk load command. But I, like I said, I didn't have to. And my spawn is, you know, I'm pretty, pretty far away from my spawn or decent ways away. And I never had to use this command, but in case it doesn't work for you, uh, you may have to use this command because if you don't, you won't be able to use this inventory system if you're in other dimensions or if you're too far away from your inventory. You should be able to get the storage inventory pretty on. The only limiting thing is for the storage network route. You will have to have four blocks of quartz. That's the only thing you'll need from the nether. Uh, if you don't want to go to the nether, you can get randomite ore. If you, you can usually find it underground pretty well, but in case you are not having luck finding it, you can come over here to the coin shop and you can buy it with copper coins. If you see here, you can buy one randomite ore, ore for one copper coin. That's a pretty easy way to get quartz if you don't want to go to the nether yet. So you should be able to have access to this storage system pretty early on. All you need is gold and then some slime and that's it. You can also make a crafting remote, which will allow you the crafting UI, but you will have to go to an ocean monument and beat the ocean monument and then also have access to the nether because you need blaze powder to make an ender chest. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, pretty much storage remote is super nice to have access to because whatever dimension you're in, you can always have access to your storage. So in case your backpack gets full, you can just start dumping stuff in your storage. It is really nice, really nice uh, quality of life upgrade in Rad 2. And the last one, this is just a little bonus, uh, bonus trinkets that will be really helpful to you. You can make a dislocation ring, basically it's a magnet ring that has a 16 block radius. Super nice. You can make the magnetic ring with just diamonds, gold and whatnot. Very easy to make. And then you can make the dislocation ring with Aya Ender Lapis. So you will need access to the nether in order to make this dislocation ring. But at the very least, in the beginning, you can make the magnetic ring very easily. And then one last thing, the emblem of the monster slayer. You will, again, you will need to have access to the nether because you need one nether ingot, soul lantern, blaze powder. This charm is really good because it gives you plus 25% damage against undead, plus 10% damage against other aggressive creatures, plus one looting. And the most important thing, slain monsters drop double XP, which is huge. That is a huge buff to your XP generation abilities in Rad 2. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope these items help you out in Rad 2. I pretty much use these items all the time in my playthroughs and whatnot of Rad 2. They are extremely helpful, and I feel like they're pretty much mandatory to playing Rad 2. They will make your life way easier. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it helped you out, and I'll see you around. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I'm always helping out people in Rad 2. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.